this is um, a part of us um, of a, a bigger project that I've been uh, I've been uh, involved with. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's basically looking at uh, what levodopa-intestinal gel uh, does uh, outcome-wise in terms of these kinesias, um, and obviously uh, that study basically replicates what's known, which is that uh, these kinesias uh, tend to improve uh, levodopa-carbidopa-intestinal gel uh, as a group. So if you look at many patients and you see the average of the dyskinesia rating scales and, and other scales, you see an improvement at the group level, and that's certainly important to, to mention. Um, there are, however, a few things to, to keep in mind, and that's the reason why this is an important topic to me. First, that over time, things might change. Um, uh, obviously, the study we, we talked about has a relatively short follow-up, but uh, if you look at studies that have, uh, have assessed patients for up to five years, you recognize that over time, these conditions tend to worsen again. And that's not a surprise because at the end of the day, this is a levodopa-based therapy, and levodopa can cause these kinesias. It might be a surprise to people firmly believing that a continuous dopaminergic stimulation helps these kinesias, but I don't think that's actually uh, something ever proven in humans. It's been proven in animal models, but animal models are not necessarily uh, useful, actually are often not useful and misleading. Um, so this idea that stimulating the receptors continuously improves these kinesias is actually not true in my opinion. And, and, and infusion of levodopa shows this because uh, the reason why these kinesias improve is because we get rid of peaks. Uh, so the patient has a steady curve, uh, uh, pharmacokinetic curve without peaks, and therefore there are no these kinesias associated to the peak. But with time, the body gets more and more sensitive to levodopa. So that a dose that wasn't causing these kinesias in the past can cause these kinesias at this point in the follow-up. The second reason I'm interested in these conditions in these patients is because we had a chance uh, a few years ago to notice um, a strange phenomenology in some patients. This is a rare problem, but it can happen and people need to be aware of, which are um, atypical uh, dyskinesias or complex dyskinesias that look like biphasic dyskinesias. Uh, and biphasic dyskinesias are typically uh, involved in the lower limbs. They can be quite bothersome associated with some rest restlessness or pain in the legs. And, and actually this can also affect gait. Uh, and uh, you know this is how the two topics uh, in a way converge. Um, and uh, this is something typically seen for a few minutes when levodopa is, is uh, peaking. So when it's kicking in and when levodopa is wearing off. Now, what happens in some dis uh, the, um, uh, of these patients on intestinal infusion is that perhaps the dose is constantly low and they have this type of dyskinesias that is like a biphasic dyskinesias, but continuously. So it's no longer biphasic from a temporal standpoint, but it's continuous. Uh, obviously in these cases, what we do is simply increasing the amount of levodopa infusion, which works. But what we have seen over time, and, and this is linked to what I said a few minutes ago, is that these patients then won't have biphasic like dyskinesias, but they will start having peak dose dyskinesias. The rest of the body will be more, uh, more uh, mobile because the body gets more and more sensitive to these doses of levodopa. And if you lower the dose, you will see more of the biphasic type of dyskinesias. So sometimes it's difficult to find a happy medium. And to my surprise, I also seen some patients in whom the two types of dyskinesias are coexisting. And so there's no way to find a dose that helps one without worsening the other. Um, and again, we're not inventing anything new here because if people look back at what's been written in the past with infusion of levodopa, these are studies from the 80s, there were already back then some patients that developed this problem in a few hours with a continuous infusion IV. Again, this was rare, but it was reported in a few patients.